South Bend, Indiana was a town of somber skies and murmuring whispers, its soul steeped in the hush of the unspoken. The clandestine sigh of the wind through the sycamores held secrets that it only shared with those who dared to listen. Jack Thornton, a silhouette born from scars and shaded with bravery, was a patient listener. He moved through the town's sepia-toned streets with a resilient stride that echoed with tales of the past and resonated with the heartbeat of his current investigation. Jack bore the mark of a survivor, a victim of the unforgiving Californian earthquake that shook the foundations of his life years ago. Yet his eyes, twin oceans of undying persistence, bore no sign of a victim. They spoke of resilience, their steady gaze reflecting the strength of a man who refused to be broken by the world's unyielding tremors. His investigation centered around John Adams High School, a structure of mottled bricks and whispered histories nestled in the heart of the town. The facade of innocence was marred by the ominous undercurrent of illegal weapons seeping through its corridors. The chilling whispers of rumors reverberated against the backdrop of algebra lessons and schoolyard chatter. He sat across the table from the school's principal, a portly woman with eyes that echoed fear and understanding in equal parts. I don't want to believe it, Detective Thornton, she confessed, her fingers nervously twisting a worn out paperweight. But the shadows grow longer here and they whisper things. He nodded, understanding the cryptic dance of fear and uncertainty. He had seen it before in the eyes of victims and now he saw it in the mirroring pain of South Bend's reality. The town was not just a backdrop for his investigation, but a character intricately woven into the narrative. It's whispers adding layers of complexity. In this chapter of his life, his loyal partner was the echo of solitude. His conversations were limited, often shared with the silent witnesses of the town, the crumbling brick walls, the sighing willows, and the shadowy school corridors. The town listened, and so did he. He submerged himself into the undercurrents of the whispers, meticulously unraveling the tangled threads of the weapon dealer's conspiracy. He spent his nights poring over cryptic files, the dim lamplight casting long, haunting shadows over his furrowed brow. His diligence was his only armor against the veiled enemy he was hunting. Each unearthed clue was a piece of the terrifying puzzle he sought to solve a tale waiting to be told. As the keeper of such tales, he listened and decoded, his bravery never waning. The case was not just about illegal weapons, but also about something else, something he couldn't yet put his finger on, but he could feel its pulse. As he delved deeper into the mystery, his past and present intertwined in a labyrinth of uncanny symbols and hair-raising predictions. As the echoes of the earthquake faded into the resonating vibrations of this newfound enigma, he found himself teetering on the precipice of a much darker abyss, one that promised to swallow not just him, but the entire town of South Bend, Indiana. The color of mystery in South Bend was the same as that of the early morning fog, a pearly gray shade that wrapped the town in a dense shroud. As the sun slumbered below the horizon, the town awoke to the murky tendrils of enigma that curled around Jack's senses. The narrative arc, once a clean line connecting the dots of weapons trade, twisted into a convoluted spiral of the arcane. The cloak and dagger were replaced with symbols and prophecies that gnawed at the edges of his mind, awakening a dread he hadn't felt since the tremors of the earthquake. His investigation led him to the heart of the enigma, the shadowy figures known as the Acolytes of the Unseen, they were not mere criminals, but the carriers of a doctrine that reeked of the unnatural. The connections he had once seen began to blur, morphing into a complex pattern that revolved not around the school, but around Jack himself. As realization dawned, a chill slithered down his spine, replacing the calm rhythm of comprehension with a cacophony of foreboding. Ruthie Baker, the town librarian and a friend from better days, became his confidant in these troubling times. They often sat in the musty silence of the library, surrounded by tomes that whispered ancient secrets. These symbols, Jack, they're old, really old, Ruthie would mutter, her fingers tracing the cryptic markings that now formed a substantial part of his investigation. Her voice quivered, a testament to the cosmic terror the symbols invoked. 
As the detective and the librarian poured over the pages, the library became an amphitheater of their whispered conversations and the raspy soliloquy of turning pages. The veil of normalcy gradually lifted to reveal a cosmic stage where the play of the acolytes was set. The scale of their grand design brought a sense of insignificance, dwarfing the familiar spaces of the town he thought he knew. In the solitude of his home, he reflected on the unfolding enigma. His nights were a battlefield where logic waged a war against the uncanny. Visions of distorted time and place crept into his dreams, merging the reality of South Bend with an otherworldly landscape that defied understanding. Yet he wasn't one to yield easily. His persistence, a quality that had seen him through the aftershocks of the earthquake, spurred him on. His brave heart hammered against the walls of the cryptic cosmos he found himself trapped in. The stars in the night sky no longer shone with the warm twinkle of familiarity. They leered at him with an alien glow, hinting at the abyss of the cosmic horror that was about to reveal itself. Like a storm cloud on a sunlit day, the maw of madness descended on Jack's life, engulfing the familiar landscapes of South Bend in an unnatural darkness. It was not the everyday, tangible madness of men, but the ethereal, formless insanity of the cosmos seeping into the cracks of reality. His investigation took him further down the rabbit hole, where the boundary between the ordinary and the extraordinary blurred, warping his perception. Time danced to a different rhythm here, sometimes waltzing slowly, other times sprinting in an anarchic rush. The once mundane faces of the townsfolk transformed into eerie masks, their humanity ebbing away into alien forms that sent ripples of dread coursing through his veins. One such face belonged to a local farmer, Jedediah. Jack found himself sitting across the man in the dimly lit sanctuary of a rundown bar, the air thick with an unsettling silence. I seen him, Jack, Jedediah mumbled, the terror evident in his eyes. At night, the stars, they ain't the same. They shift, they pulse, like something's watching. The shift in reality was now bleeding into Jack's daily interactions. His conversations were imbued with an undercurrent of the absurd, where tales of star formations altering their constellations and shadows twisting into unspeakable forms became the norm. A cold dread gripped him, but his bravery, like a candle flickering in the dark, refused to die. As the acolyte's monstrous deity began to reveal itself, he found himself questioning his sanity. Each terrifying revelation pushed him further into the labyrinth of his mind echoing the fear that once gripped him during the earthquake. Yet like then he clung to his sanity, desperate to navigate the chaos that threatened to engulf him. Amid the storm of terror, Ruthie was his anchor. Their dialogues evolved into philosophical discourses, struggling to make sense of the chaos. The reality we understand is but a veneer, Jack, she said one night, her words quivering in the cold air. Beneath it, the cosmos throbs with beings and dimensions that our minds aren't equipped to fathom. The world of South Bend was reshaping, morphing into a cosmic nightmare. Armed with his unyielding determination and an unwavering resolve, he continued his descent into the abyss. He traversed the terrifying landscape, not as a victim, but as a warrior challenging the insurmountable. The echo was the lullaby of the cosmos, a reverberating whisper that transcended time and space. It clung to the air of South Bend, a haunting melody that played out the terrifying finale in Jack's cosmic opera. The echoes of the past of a terrifying earthquake were now drowned in the monstrous roar of the present, an existential abyss that promised a reality far more terrifying. He found himself at the heart of this otherworldly nightmare, standing face to face with the entity that the acolytes worshipped. It was a horrifying symphony of the stars, an amalgamation of cosmic energies that pulsated in a rhythm alien to human understanding. Yet he stood unbroken. His face, pale under the inhuman glow of the entity, was etched with lines of bravery. This confrontation was not an end, but a test of his indomitable spirit, one he was determined to pass. His escape was not a blind run, but a meticulously planned evasion. He moved through the altered landscape of South Bend, 
his every step challenging the monstrous reality that had consumed his town. He faced the leering stars, the pulsating shadows, and the distorted faces of once familiar folks, his resolve burning brighter with each passing moment. Ruthie, he said one fateful evening, their meeting spot now an intersection between the real and the surreal. This town, these people, they're not the ones they were after. It was me. It was always me. And I'll be damned if I let them win. Her eyes, full of a strange mix of terror and admiration, met his. You're more than what they think, Jack, she whispered, her voice a soft lifeline in the encroaching chaos. You're a survivor, a fighter. It was then that he decided to turn the tables. Using the acolytes' blind faith against them, he manipulated their rituals, twisting the cosmic strings that they believed controlled him. He emerged from the final encounter, his soul unscathed, yet forever marked by the incomprehensible horrors he had witnessed. His departure from South Bend was as silent as his arrival, a fleeting shadow slipping away with the dawn. He left behind the remnants of the cosmic nightmare, the town forever trapped in the echo of its horrors. He moved on, carrying with him the echoes of his trials. As he looked up at the night sky, the twinkling stars now held a different meaning. The echo of his ordeal was a constant companion, a reminder of the lurking horrors beneath the facade of reality. The tale ended not with a triumphant cheer, but with a silent acknowledgement, a quiet understanding of the universe's terrifying magnificence. Jack Thornton, the survivor, now stood a silent sentinel against the cosmic horrors, his tale an echo in the annals of cosmic horror. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like it and subscribe to our channel where you can find more similar stories and click on the bell icon to never miss one. There is plenty more cosmic horror to come from the Eldritch Tales Factory. Stay tuned and until next time.